creating an ongoing monthly or bi-weekly membership. Once you're on your client information page, we're going to click on this new membership slash plans button. You get redirected to your memberships and uh, retail sales page. Now below your custom membership, you have different kind of membership types, right? So if you want to create an ongoing monthly and bi-weekly membership, I'm going to choose my ongoing. Below my payment method, I can either choose payment type as credit card or bank account slash EFT. If I was to choose credit card, you're going to see that I can enter my credit card data in this field. Credit card number, expiry month, expiry year, and CVD. However, if I was to choose my payment type as bank account slash EFT, you're going to see that the fields change down below. Now, this way I can enter the client's bank number, transit number, and their account number. Okay, so let's say if we were, you know, for training purposes, we're going to use credit card. Okay, so once I say, okay, I'm going to, you know, Joseph Smith has given me his credit card and he's saying, okay, go ahead and create my ongoing uh, monthly or bi-weekly membership. Right, so credit card. Now use existing credit card. This, you can use this button if you already have entered um, Joseph Smith's credit card into your software already. However, this is the first time we're creating this membership. So we're not going to use this button right now. I'm going to come here down below to credit card information. Same as personal detail. If I was to check this off, it, as you see, it auto-populated these fields. So whatever address and phone number I had entered initially gets auto-populated here. However, if let's say Joseph is a minor, Okay, and his father is the payee of this credit card. You want to enter, you know, Mr. Smith's name here, right, as the credit card holder. So at that point, you can always change the credit card owner's name. If they have a different email address, you can do that. If they have different phone number or address, you can all modify it all here. Okay, now we go down to the credit card type. So I'm going to... Credit card types, now if you have Visa, MasterCard, any other regular card, you're going to just leave it as all other types. If you're using American Express, you know, then obviously you're going to choose American Express. For training purposes, let's say we're going to leave it as all other type. Credit card. Now, I'm just going to grab a test credit card from my um, billing company that we use. And I'm going to plug that in here for training purposes. So let's say if we were to give it a random expiry date, let's say November 2026. And I'm just going to give it a CVD of 123. So now billing info, under billing info, you can choose either monthly payments or bi-weekly payments, right? However you want to charge Mr. Smith as. So let's say if I'm going to create monthly transactions. I choose monthly amount. Now you can say, you know, you're char charging them 120 per month. Okay. If you want to give them discount, you could. Let's say if it's a family membership and you have certain discount, you can choose these fields. If not, leave it be. Um, you know, again, how much discount you want to give based on the percentage or based on the dollar amount, you can enter that here. Okay. First billing date. Now this is completely up to you if you want to charge them, you know, on the day that they have come in and you want to start their payments from then on. Or if you want to charge them for the first of every month, you want to charge them on the 15th of every month. It's entirely up to you, whatever date you want to choose. Okay, so for training purposes, let's say if I was to choose today's date. Okay, now you see the membership expiry date has already automatically been grayed out so I cannot change this. It, even though it's showing you, you know, next year 2021, however, this is just for our software data to create transactions. This is not the actual expiry date. Okay, so now let's say if I was to charge them 13% tax, I'm going to check off the include tax. It's going to automatically calculate 
120, you know, with 13% tax comes out to 135.60. Right now, for ongoing memberships, you know, there's no point sending the invoice. It's more for prepaid membership or, you know, one-time transaction, right? So let's say if I was to go ahead and create this membership. Once I create it, you're going to see that account status on my client information page now has changed to an active account. Okay, so Joseph Smith has an active account, right? So if I was to scroll down below, you see under memberships, now it's showing me the membership that I have just created. It's a valid, you know, um, account status, right? It's a valid um, membership paying $135.60 on a monthly basis starting on May 25th, right? Now it's showing you the expiry date of 2023. Again, like I said, do not worry about the expiry date. Let's go ahead and view this ongoing monthly membership that we just created. Once I click on this blue view button, it takes me to the custom membership information page. This is where I can see my card owner info that I had created as Mr. Smith. My payment info, the credit card that I entered, right? Credit card number, my expiry month, year, and then the CVD and billing info. If you see the billing info is monthly billing starting on the 25th of every month, right? $120 and it's added the 15, 13% tax for $15.60. This is the total amount that Joseph Smith's father, Mr. Smith's going to be paying. Okay, so now scrolling below, you're going to see showing 1 to 36 entries. Okay, so May 25th. 135.60 was already processed by our billing company Bambora. They went into this credit card and they charged Mr. Smith $135.60. Once the payment goes through, you're going to see the activation status is false now because this transaction is not active anymore. It has already processed, so that's why it's true. We always get this billing status update from our billing company. So if it's approved, it's gone through, it's going to give you approved status, right? However, if it was to get declined, it's going to show you rejected declined. Okay, and then the billing company assigns it a batch um, that if you ever want to log into your billing company and see which batch is processing which payment, you can always access it through here. Okay, so here's 36 transactions for ongoing monthly membership that we have created for the 25th of every month. So if you were to scroll down, so you're going to see that on the 25th of every month, our billing company will basically go into this credit card and charge Mr. Smith $135.60. Okay, on every month on the 25th at 12 a.m. midnight. Okay. Now you see there's 36 transactions that have already been created. Once the software gets down to last 12, it would automatically add another 12 transactions to this 36. So again, because it's an ongoing membership, it has no expiry. It would keep adding another 12, another 12 once it's down below to 12 transactions.